Flames fans, it's time for Flames Unfiltered, your spot for Calgary Flames Hockey Talk. We are officially at the quarter mark of the NHL season. So how do you feel about your Flames this year? Good evening and welcome to another edition of Flames Unfiltered. As I fly solo this week, I am the host of the show, Brad Brood. Kyle Lewis, the other host of the show, is on a little vacation, a much-needed vacation. And I've got a rumor going around today that uh, it is Kyle's birthday. So uh, happy birthday to the other host of Flames Unfiltered, Kyle Lewis. And speaking of birthdays, uh, yeah, Saturday night my family surprised me with a... uh, 50th birthday party for me is so yeah i've uh i've pushed over the limit to 50 now and uh yeah i had a real nice time with family friends and uh yeah it was it was a really good time and uh i don't know makes you appreciate the good in your in your friends and your in your family and and everybody for doing that and uh, a lot of people showed up it was crazy and uh really 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 had a good time and uh so thanks to Everybody that was at that, as for the Flames, well, it was nice to get a win on Tuesday. Uh, really nice. And and a win I didn't feel like we had to, like, struggle, struggle, struggle through. We it had a few moments uh, when Florida scored their first. I was like, oh, geez, or what are we doing here? But all in all, a, a game where we didn't have that last-minute struggle. So that was, that was all good. But how about Dan Vladar's white mask that he wears? That he's going to wear with the reverse retros and the blasties. It is off the charts. As far as I'm concerned, I think it's the nicest Flames mask I've ever seen. It's crazy because I liked I liked Kipper's mask is when he had that that white and red skull one. Um, I like old, the old Roman Turk Iron Maiden mask. Uh, but you know what this this one I don't know. It's just the way that those colors they just really really stand out. I I thought it looked good and. Uh, I look forward to seeing that again, as uh, we're going to get a rush of re- reverse retro and blast you over the next month as uh, the NHL plugs everybody buy jerseys for Christmas, buy jerseys for Christmas. That's what they're doing, right? Yeah. That's what this reverse retro is all about. Today on the show, uh, it's going to be a bu- busy solo show for me. I haven't done one of these in a little bit of time, so it's a little odd and a little bit different. I miss having Kyle here, but hey. I'm glad he's off having a good time, and he'll be back next week. But uh, we're going to start by recapping four games uh, that happened since we last talked last week, and then uh, we're going to talk about a bunch of Flames news. We're going to talk about the November schedule, what December looks like, uh, Kachuk's return to the Saddle Dome. Um, Do we have, I don't want to say a starting goalie controversy, not that at all. But does Dan Vladar deserve the start on Thursday night when the Montreal Canadiens come to town? We'll talk about that. And then we'll roll into the quarter mark, where we thought the Flames would be, where they're at, where the odds makers think that they're going to end up. And then it's on to a hot topic button. <laughs> Is it time to infuse some youth into this lineup? I'll give you my take on that one. And we'll wrap with uh, this week's games, a preview of them. It's on a busy edition of Flames Unfiltered. All right, Flames fans, a busy week this week. Uh, four games were on the docket, three on the road, one back at the Saddle Dome, and uh, all in all, not very good. Not not a real good week. Finished off good. Gives us a little bit of hope for this week, right? Started on Wednesday uh, in Pittsburgh, and that one ended up being a 2-1 to one shootout loss to the Pittsburgh Penguins, a game that Dan Vladar Started and Dan Vlar was very, very good. Other bright spot. Well, you know, okay, Pittsburgh outshot and outchanced the Flames drastically, had numerous point blank chances, and Vladar was top notch. I mean, this guy has been that good. 
Um, I know he's, he's, he's getting a lot of talk right now. Uh, there's a lot of talk around the city of Calgary about, you know, where this team goes and, uh, and how important Vladar is. And, and, and is he the guy that's going to get us out of this, uh, this sticky slump that we've kind of been marred in for the last month? He, he just might be Dylan Dubé gets his, uh, gets another goal as a two goals in a row or two games in a row where Dylan Dubé scored. Um, good to see him starting to get back on track. And that kind of continued through the week. Uh, Lindholm got a penalty in overtime and you know, not that I ever want guys to get penalties in overtime. Um, I questioned this one a little bit, but anyways, the thing that I liked about that and the bright spot of that whole thing with the penalty is that we saw key shot blocks from Hannafin, Hanev, Backlund, all during this overtime. And it was critical to push in this one to a shootout. The Flames go on to lose in the shootout. But you know what? When everybody w- walked away from this one, how did you not think that, you know what? Dan Vladar stole us a point. He flat out stole us a point in this one. Fast forward to Friday, a Friday afternoon, Black Friday um, in the States, and they matinee with the Washington Capitals. And I thought this one was junk. I don't even know how to describe it. Markstrom was in net against Kemper. We thought, I thought we played fairly decent in the first. We just couldn't finish. We had chances and, and, and could not, could not bury the puck. And then Kuznetsov gets a, a one on two. And our defenseman looked horrendous on this. And then he slides a soft one past Markstrom. And it's like, God, is this how today is going to go? And it did. It just, it just com- completely went off the rails. Um, the flames were down by two in the third period. Things were fine. Nine minutes, nine minutes ish to go. And Lucic is out there down by two, which I don't understand that one at, at this point. And he takes an offensive zone cross checking penalty. That was unreal. And, and you know what the part that bothered me the most is any uh, Dylan Dubé takes this penalty where he doesn't see the ice for two, two games. If, um, you know, Michael Backlund gets benched earlier in the year for a couple of bad shifts, but Lucic can go out there and take horrendous penalty after horrendous penalty. And you know what? Guess what? He's out to drop the puck after he gets out of the penalty box after Ovechkin scores on the power play to put the game under reach. Might have been the most fired up I've been all year was after this game. I was that fired up. I, uh, one goal in six periods after this game. I'm mad. I'm mad about the Lucci situation. I'm mad about the effort today. All in all, the Washington game was junk. The next day, Flames in Carolina for another American matinee. I hate day games. Hate them. And this one goes to the Carolina Hurricanes 3-2. to two. Vladar in goal. I thought Vlara was really, really good. Good news. Michael Stone is back. Gilbert out to Foley had a chance early and, and cranked one off the post and then Dylan Dubé turned one over in the defensive zone a monster turnover and uh, Carolina buried it right away one nothing and you could just tell that that deflated this team a lot uh, and it, Vladarm had a had a sequence I believe it was in the second where it was like bang, 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 four in a row, big saves. Um, unreal. Coleman takes a late penalty um, and then a power play goal for um, Carolina seals the deal. And, and Calgary fought back. They played much better, I thought, than they did in Washington. I was frustrated after this one, too, because there was a goalie interference on Ajo. About three minutes left in the game. No call. Terrible call. I do, I do not. I have no idea what goalie interference is anymore. I, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. And I don't think most NHL fans, hell, I don't think most players in the league know. I don't think much coaches in the league know. I don't think anybody knows. I don't even think the officials know anymore. And if a meeting isn't held in, in the league offices with officials on this one, and what direction we want to go with goalie interference, I, I don't know. I've seen things all week in other games that were just absolutely mind-boggling. This ends the longest road trip of, of the year, and the Flames went 2-3-1, and, and this dropped them to 9-9-3 nine, nine, overall. 
and, and things didn't look good coming back home. What did get people fired up was it's Tuesday night, Panthers in town, reverse retro or not reverse retros, the blasty jerseys on and Matthew Kachuk's back. And I was shocked, but Dan Vladar gets to start again. I thought Markstrom would do be up to his old tricks and put in Markstrom or I thought Sutter would pull it, put in Markstrom and be back to his old tricks. Nope. Dan Vladar gets to start, which I thought was a great decision and proved to be a great decision as Dan Vladar was on his game again. The guy just keeps doing it. Stops 31 shots on of 33. Good to see Huberto back with Lindholm and Toffoli. I like that. That's where they belong. That's where it'll work. It may take some time, but that's where it needs to be. Dubé scores again. He looks like he's heating up. Majapani gets a goal. Hu- or excuse me, Majapani did not get a goal. Huberto got a goal. Anderson got a goal. Richie got a goal. He, I'm sorry, he did. Majapani gets that blaster in the third period off the off of a rebound. Or off a pass from Huberto after his breakaway. I forgot. Okay, that's how that went down. But you know, everybody that we needed to get hot got hot this game. Majapani, Dubey, Huberto keeps things rolling. Rasmus Anderson had one of his best games of his career. This was a good game. A very good game. Was it the prettiest game for the Flames? No, probably not. But pretty damn effective. And it's exactly what we want, right? We get two points, and we didn't have to struggle in the last couple minutes of the game. Now, November's schedule, November's schedule was was a Bearcat. It really, really was a Bearcat. And it was a difficult month where we didn't win our first game until the 12th of the month. We finished off the month of November, four wins, seven losses, two OT losses, two shootout losses, and we got only 12 of a possible 30 points. Not good enough, especially from a team that we expected to be, I guess what you'd say, elite, right? Now, December is not going to be any easier. We had 15 games in November. Six of them were at home. In December, we go 16 games in the month of December with the Christmas holidays. This is a jam-packed four-game-a-week month. The bright spot is that we have eight of them at home against what I feel are some, I don't want to say easier opponents, but yes, easier opponents. Now, Matthew Kachuk returned to town on Tuesday night, and I'll give you my take and my feelings on that. I liked Matthew Kachuk as a Calgary Flame. There was times that he frustrated me. He left me wanting more after some of his playoff. I don't know. Now I can't see it. struggles because he didn't struggle in the playoffs, but, but he left me wanting more a little bit. It drove me nuts how every time he checked, he, instead of driving his shoulder into somebody, he would turn his butt into him. I never quite figured that out. That he's masterful in front of the net. Thought he was a magician when it came to tipping pucks. But it was good to see him back in, in the saddle dome. Before the game, he his quote was, I tried to leave an impact in the city and hope to Im- an impact on the team. So hopefully I'll be well received. Well, during his tribute, he received a standing ov- ovation and was very, very well received which I thought and expected from the classic Calgary crowd, right? As soon as the puck dropped, or as soon as the puck dropped after the after that, he got booed as soon as he touched the puck and, and was booed from here on out after he touched the puck. And I expected that too, and that's probably what he deserves. Now, this might get a little bit of kickback, but you know what? What did Matthew Kachuk do for us? He was good in the community. Was he good in the locker room? I don't know. I've heard mixed stories there. Was he always at the top of his game? No. Did he pout a lot? Seemed to. Did he score some clutch goals? Hell yeah, he did. Did he disappear when we needed him the most? Yeah, he did. 
the playoff success while he was in town was not very good. So we need to respect and celebrate him. Matthew Kachuk is not one of the greatest Flames players ever. Not in my mind, not at all. He had a hell of a season last year, but then disappeared in the playoffs. It's interesting. Now, Tuesday night in the game, Matthew Kachuk and NX Flames Sam Bennett had zero goals, zero assists, zero points, were minus four, had two giveaways, and played 41.59 minutes combined. Very good numbers. Pretty uneventful. He had a couple of chances in low, a couple that I thought he might be able to tuck in, but it never happened. But you know what made me feel pretty good? And it gave me a little bit of respect. Probably didn't make his teammates and his coach very happy, but he ran into Lindholm inadvertently in the third. Stopped, and you could visually see if he asked him if he was okay, and almost helped him up. Not something you see from one of the biggest pests in the National Hockey League that often. But deep down, I think that kind of tells us the kind of guy that Matthew Kachuk is. And we maybe do owe Matthew a little bit of respect in the fact that he was honest all the time. He told management what he wanted. And we could be frustrated and we could be mad that he didn't want to play for the Calgary Flames. But at least he didn't leave us completely hung out to dry. So the big win and a Dan Vladar playing three of the last four, I believe, and playing well has really created a situation going into Thursday's game against the Montreal Canadiens. Do you play Dan Vladar on Thursday night? Or do you go back to Markstrom and keep trying to turn that screwdriver and get him out of the slump? Now, I see an argument for both sides. And if I was in Vegas and I was putting money down on it, I would bet that we'll see Jacob Markstrom get the start just based off Daryl Sutter's, I don't know, the way Daryl Sutter usually does things. I'm interested to see where this goes and who gets a start. But right now, Jacob marks from amongst 31 goalies that have played more than 40 minutes or 400 minutes this season. Markstrom ranks 31st in save percentage at 0.878. He ranks 31st. 31st. That's not good goaltending. He's led in a soft one in almost every single game. Hasn't, in my mind, come close to a shutout, and hasn't even hasn't stole us a game. Now he's had a couple good games. He's made a couple giant saves. I, 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 those don't go unnoticed by me. But as giant as those saves are, there's been games where he's let us down. He'll get through this. He's our starting goalie. He is an elite goalie. And come playoff time, he will be the man and will probably be at the top of his game. But right now, points are critical, critical, critical. And Dan Vladar is playing better than Jacob Markstrom right now. And Dan Vladar should be getting the start against Montreal. I feel so confident. I feel so, so confident with Dan Vladar in that right now. And unfortunately, as much as I think Jacob Markstrom is a top 10 goalie in the league, I'm scared right now when he's in net. And I don't think I'm the only one that's scared right now with the play we've seen from Dan Vladar. Markstrom's our man, but right now you need to run the hot hand. I want to see Vladar in net Thursday night. All right, it is a quarter mark of the NHL season. Where are the Flames, and where did we think the Flames would be? Uh, disappointed, I guess, would be my first take. <laughs> Probably echoed by every single person listening to this podcast. So what's the good and what's the bad? The good, I think Tyler Toffoli's been good. I think Dan Vladar's been good. We just talked about that. I think Nikita Zadorov has been good. I think Brett Ritchie has been good. 
I think Rasmus Anderson has been very, very good. And the rest kind of in the middle. What's been bad? The top end offense. And I know when you lose 200 point men, it changes everything. Now we brought in a hundred point guy and, and an almost a hundred point guy, but neither one is produced to what they did last year. And maybe, and we, and we probably knew that going in that they, they weren't going to produce quite that elite of a level. Now the defensive court on paper to me looked top three in the league and they haven't even been close to that. Now, missing Shillington is not helping us at all. And some injuries have not helped us at all on the back end. But still, I, this group on, on the back end needs to, needs to improve. Um, there has been so, so many more giveaways this year uh, that, that we just we didn't see last year. And, and we're seeing them this year, and that's unfortunate. And something I do think that this team can clean up now there's been a lot of there has been some doom and gloom for me where I've been like, you know, where's this team going? Like what we've taken a step back and we keep comparing to last year, which probably isn't fair because it's a pretty I don't want to say a completely different team, but but a lot differently. It just some doesn't feel right right now. And I'm not gonna lie at the quarter mark, I'm a little scared if this is fixable. Markstrom has not been good, but you know, that's fixable. Uh, but one thing we have going for us is I look at our schedule and it hasn't been easy and we can make excuses, but the fact is we've beaten some good teams this year. We've beat Colorado. We beat Edmonton. We've beaten Vegas. We've beaten Carolina. We've beaten Winnipeg. Who's been a good team. We've beaten Florida twice. Uh, you know, we have beat some pretty decent teams. Unfortunately, our losses have been to like Buffalo, Seattle, Nashville, the Islanders, the Devils. I mean, we've lost to some good teams too, like the Bruins and stuff, but we've lost to some teams that I mean, we lost to a Washington Capitals team, probably our worst out into the year that was decimated with injuries and, and couldn't pull two points out that afternoon. Now, American Thanksgiving's always kind of looked at as a mark, a playoff marker. I think the number is 73.4% of the teams that are in the playoffs on American Thanksgiving end up in the playoffs at the end of the season. And the Flames were there. They were in a wild card spot. So, okay, we're okay, right? Well, are we? Because last year at this time, we were in first place with 29 points. We were 12, 3, and 5. Edmonton was in second. Vegas was in third. Anaheim was in fourth. San Jose, LA, Vancouver, Seattle. Okay, that was that was where they were last year. Well, now this year, where are we sitting? And as of last night, Vegas is in first with 35 points. Seattle was in second at 31. That's a surprise. LA is in third at 28. Edmonton at 28. And Calgary, or excuse me, Edmonton at 26. And Calgary at 23. Not ideal, sitting out of the top four. Well, who can we catch? Well, I honestly, God, I hope I don't jinx myself on this one. I, I can't see Seattle being this good all year, and I feel like we're a better team than L.A. As, as much as L.A., and I've spoke highly of them this year and do feel like they're a lot better team, I feel like we're a better team than them. Now, as for the Edmonton Oilers, I don't know, and as for Vegas, I don't think they're catchable. I just don't. They've built up and and put together such a strong front third or front quarter of the season that I, that I don't know if they're catchable. So what do the projections say? And I always look to the athletic and I always look to money puck and I've laughed at both of them and, and, and both of them have been right at times. But they still have Calgary up in the top six. They have them as a 98% chance of making the playoffs excuse me, 95% chance of making the playoffs, 7% of winning the Stanley Cup, 11% of making the final, 
an 18% chance of the conference final, a 27% chance of the division final. When you look at the Pacific, they have Calgary as a 38% chance to finish second, a 95% chance to make the playoffs. I've said that. They have Vegas winning the division. They have Seattle finishing third. That's surprising to me. And they have Edmonton finishing fourth, LA finishing fifth, Vancouver sixth, San Jose, and Anaheim rounding up the top. They give Calgary a 24% chance of winning the division. They have them a 38% for second, 21 for third, 11 for fourth, and no other. So they, they're, they're banking that this team's going to turn it around. I don't know if I agree that highly of them, but I mean, I'm glad they feel that strongly about the Calgary Flames. You flip on over to Money Puck, and they've got us at 76.9% chance of making the playoffs, 36.1% of making the second round, 17.1% of making the third, 85 of making the finals, and a 3.9% chance of winning the Stanley Cup. They have Edmonton at only 48% chance of making the playoffs, and they have Seattle at a 98% chance of making the playoffs. Holy jumping. They think Seattle's that strong. They've got LA 54. Eh, who else matters to us? Vancouver at 10. Now, I don't know. I, I hope that when we get to the halfway mark and we do this show, we forgot all the doom and gloom of the of the quarter mark show. A lot didn't go the Flames way in the quarter first quarter. Can they turn it around? Absolutely. Will it happen for sure? I I don't know. I haven't seen enough consistency from this team to believe anything yet. I do believe they can be a good team. I believe they have the personnel to be a good team. I just, I don't know where we go with this. The talk in Calgary this week was, it's time to infuse some youth. And I've thought long and hard about this. And I, and I said it on many shows previous to this, that, that we, we, we do need to infuse some youth, but it's going to come at the expense of an injury. And my partner, Kyle, who I wish was here to discuss this today, is really high on, on infusing youth into, the, in, into this lineup. Now, we're coming off a game that, of a six-goal outburst against Florida, but prior to that, the, the Flames were starving for an offensive spark. And Flames Twitter is going crazy that we need to bring up Matthew Phillips. I don't necessarily disagree. And I know Kyle Lewis is definitely on board with this. But the spot that I wanted to plug a young guy in was Dylan Dubé's spot. Now, bringing a guy up and plugging him in on the fourth line does is absolutely no good. It does no good. You've got to put him in a position to succeed. And we want to bring up a scoring winger to give offense a spark. So that brings it down to basically four guys, three realistic, Phelps, Peltier, Zari, and maybe Cole Schwint as an outlier, which I doubt that that happens. Now, Rosiska is our young guy that's making a mark. He's been moved up to wing, and I, and I like the spot they had him on, on Tuesday night on the third line. You know, there's times I watch this guy and I think, God, this guy is just going to explode for us and be great. And we talked about it one or two shows ago about how he's emerging. And he is, but every time he emerges, it seems like he lacks a consistency to retain and, and, and keep that and drag that out into three, four, five game segments. We just don't see it. And that's unfortunate. And I, and I hope that that changes. I've always thought it can change, but every time I start to believe that, he proves me wrong. So now it's time to let him in this position, give him a 10-game run, and let's see what happens. But as for calling up a guy from Stockton, my first thought was, 
well, can we do that cap space wise? Well, I checked it out. We have over a million dollars in cap space now. It will cut into what we can accrue for deadline, but we can afford to bring up a guy. We have a spot available to bring up a guy. Another fear I had was, you know, do you have to put Rooney on waivers to, to call up somebody? No, we don't have to right now. Uh, has Rooney done anything? No, he's done absolutely nothing, but I don't know why my gut tells me that if we let Rooney go, somebody claims him and he will be needed. A veteran centerman is going to be needed on this team down the stretch, whether it's injuries or whatnot. I have a hard time. My gut tells me that we would miss him. I don't know. My gut tells me that he's done nothing though. I will admit that, and I'm on board with all of you there. So Matthew Phillips is leading the AHL in goals and points. He's the AHL player of the week with a nine points, three goals, six assists in the last four games. He's got 26 points in 18 games this year, 13 goals, 13 assists. Right behind him is Jacob Peltier with 21 points, nine goals, 12 assists in 18 games. And Zari is right there too with eight goals, 10 assists. I mean, this... I almost said Stockton. I'm not going to say this Calgary Wranglers team who struggled out of the gates and did not look good at all and is dropping game after game after game has turned it around. And they're putting up numbers and these prospects are producing. But does that mean they'll produce at the NHL level? I think the best opportunity for a guy to come in, produce and stick would be Connor Zary. I just, not so my gut says. And I know Matthew Phillips is dynamic and he's little and that's been the knock on him. And it's the knock from me too. And maybe that's not right of me because I've had a million people say, well, Johnny Gaudreau, well, I'm sorry, Matthew Phillips is not Johnny Gaudreau. I, people say, well, Theo Fleury. Well, he's not a Theo Fleury type of player either, but he might prove me wrong. And I at least want to see him get the chance to prove me wrong. Right. But he's got it. We got to have a spot for him. Where do you plug him in now? He's got to be in the top nine. Where do you plug him in? Who do you take up? I, I don't know. Was it Dylan Dubé? Can't. He just started putting up points now. He's finally being Dylan Dubé. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I'm unfortunately afraid it's going to happen because of the injury, which is probably the best way for it to happen, but I don't want an injury. But if Dylan Dubé wouldn't have had a, a little minor outbreak here in the last couple weeks, or in the last week, excuse me, I would absolutely say let's plug him into the press box for a couple days, let him think about it, and give one of these young guys a chance to make a mark. It's just real hard to do right now when he's scoring goals. And you're sure as hell not going to, who else are you going to move up there? I mean, Majapani is struggling, but I, I, I don't think take him out of the lineup. It's been coming and coming and coming for him. It's a tough, it's a tough call. And as much as, I, I mean, I, I'm not, going to kind of defend Sutter on this one that yeah he only plays veteran guys that's because he trusts on him you know I want Lucic on the lineup bigger than life but you know having Lucic come out and bring in one of these guys for a fourth line spot sure as hell isn't going to help us is it I've disagreed with Sutter more this year than I have ever I hope that changes but it's interesting it's an interesting dilemma and it's tough having prospects that are Showing their worth, showing that they need to be in the league. But not having a spot for them. But you know what? Maybe that's something we should be thankful for. Because you know what? Good teams don't have spots for prospects. Bad teams do. Believe me, they'll get the chance. And let's just hope they make the most of it, right? Let's hope they make the most of it. Get all your Flames Unfiltered podcasts, team news, team updates, and highlights at flamesunfiltered.com. All right, Flames fans, time to preview some games and a bit fairly busy week. Thursday night at the Saddle Dome, Flames are in town for the next three games, I believe. Thursday night, the Montreal Canadiens come to town. It's a blasty night when we've been good with Blast Night. No. 
Dylan Dubé will score every night. There's we wears a Blasky jersey. Montreal currently six in the Atlantic with 23 points. This is the first of two meetings. Calgary goes to Montreal on December 12th. I believe that's so uh, 12 days from today, right? Daryl Sutter. Daryl Sutter said yesterday that Sean Monahan, had he been healthy, he'd have been signed to another long-term deal. And that's a captain, Sean Monahan. That was his quote. And you know what? When you think about it and you think about how he was in Calgary and what he did and what he was up against, I don't know. How do you argue that? How do you argue that? Now, of all the people coming back to the saddle dome this year that were ex-Flames, this is the one I look forward to the most. And this is the one I will cheer the most because this guy was completely heart and soul. He did everything for this team. Did it go rough? Yeah, it did. Injured terribly over and over and over. But was he great when he was great? Yeah, he was. This guy was money in the slot. Scored some big goals for this organization. Now, I said it earlier. He's part of the group, though, that got us nowhere. So is he a remembered as a flame? Great. Probably not. Flames really, really good. Yeah. But I welcome Sean Monahan back. I've been cheering for him all year. I love what he's done this year. I love hearing positive things about Sean Monahan for once. And I can't wait to see him back tonight. And I wish him the best this year. I'm cheering for him more than any other flame. Saturday, a hockey night in Canada as Washington comes to town. Reverse retro night. First time we get to see those. Washington sixth in the Metro with 23 points. Got guys coming back from injury every day. This will be the second of two meetings we lost to them. We just talked about it earlier this week. Three to nothing in an ugly, ugly outing for the Calgary Flames. Monday, back at it on home ice as the Arizona Coyotes come to town for the first night. Another reverse retro night. Get your Christmas gifts. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Arizona currently seventh in the central with 17 points, a first of three meetings. The next two meetings will take place in Arizona in February 22nd and March 14th. This is where we start need to start making hay. Some very, very, very winnable games ahead for the Calgary Flames. And now is when we need to start making hay and move up the standings two points every single night. Time to build some consistency. Looking forward to this stretch. I really am. I, I've got good feelings. Kyle jumps back on the show next week. Can't wait to have him back. It's different doing this solo. I did it for three years. You'd think it'd be easy, but I like having Kyle here. He's a good, good Flames fan to talk Flames hockey with. He'll be back next week as we record December 6th, drop on December 7th. Priority number one, Flames. Got to win some games. We need two points every single chance we can get. Check us out on flamesunfiltered.com for previous episodes. You can listen on Apple, Spotify, and all the major podcast players. Watch us on YouTube, the Inside Edge Hockey Media Group, or search us Flames Unfiltered. You can find us anywhere. Have a good week, Flames fans. Check back next week for more Calgary Flames Hockey Talk. Get connected. Flames Unfiltered can be found on Twitter at Flame Unfiltered. Check out the Facebook page at Flames Unfiltered. Host Brad Brood is on Twitter at Brad Brood. And host Kyle Lewis is on Twitter at Van Lewis14. Like what you hear? Rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Flames Unfiltered can be found on all the major podcast players. Want to watch the show? You got it. Check out Inside Edge Hockey Media Group for every show. Subscribe while you watch. Thanks for listening, watching, and interacting. Enjoy the hockey action. We call them playoff! Yeah, baby! Playoff! Yeah, baby! Thanks for tuning in to Flames Unfiltered. Check back for more action-packed Calgary Flames talk. This episode of Flames Unfiltered was copyrighted and produced by Inside Edge Hockey Media Group.